What's up guys, it's Quicksilver, and today I'm going to do a little uh, different, something a little different. I haven't done a tutorial for you guys in a while, and uh, I know in the last video I was doing, I kind of fixed the ice farm, and I wanted to go ahead and get one done on that, because I feel, I, I'm pretty sure this is my own design. I don't think I've taken it from anybody else or anything like that, so I wanted to show you guys how to make one in case you need a source of ice in your world. Um, what I've done here, I've built, gone ahead and built like just kind of an outside frame here so I can show you what we're building. And the version of this that I'm building is actually going to be the same one that I'm using in my world. So it is a little bit bulkier maybe than it needs to be. Uh, the actual dimensions we're working with is it's going to be 11 blocks wide by 14 blocks deep and then 16 blocks high. And I've got uh, two platforms here just like I've got in my uh, actual Let's Play world where we're going to have two parts. We're going to have the part up here where we're actually going to make the ice and we're going to use pistons to push it over and move it down. And then once we get down here, we're going to actually have the area where the ice is going to get pushed out into a solid block and we'll break it out. Um, it's a little bit complex. I'm going to try something a little different with you guys uh, as far as building it. it. It's complicated, but not really. It's actually, it uses some pretty simple premises that we're going to, that I'll go over here with you really quick to actually build the farm, but when you put them all together, it looks a little bit uh, more complicated than it is. Um, in all honesty, we've got, I guess, really four components, I'm going to say. Uh, part one is where we're going to actually make our ice, and I'll show you how that's going to work and what the premises are behind it. Uh, step two is our timer, and this is really of two parts. We've got a redstone timer back here that I think is Etho's design originally. And then I have a mono-unstable circuit that I've got here that's going to basically give us uh, a little pulse every time this thing goes off. It's going to flicker. Well, there you go. It's cooperating with us. Uh, it's going to flicker and let this torch go either on or off, uh, depending on what we need it to be. Uh, and then last, I guess not last but not least, we have two other things. We have our piston pusher wall, and this is stackable, so we can make this thing as wide as we want it to be. Uh, it's going to have to match what the width is that we've got on the ice farm. And the way this thing works is, um, I think um, I think I'm doing mine seven blocks wide in here. I'll actually probably have to take a break here before I start building this thing and do a count, so I don't make sure I don't screw you up. Um, so this would be seven blocks wide as well. But if you wanted to do this, you know, 300 blocks long and make just a huge, massive amount of ice, I suppose you could probably stack it and do that. Um, actually, no, you couldn't because you can only have one repeater in here to extend your signal. So I guess you'll be limited a little bit by how far you can get the redstone to go. But anyway, so that is uh, thing three. And then thing four over here is our bud switch that is what's going to get powered when the ice finally comes down in uh, one of the columns that uh, it'll be pushing down. It'll actually pop, hit, it'll actually touch this uh, sticky piston here, which will shove this over and back really fast and give us a pulse, which we'll send to our piston pusher wall to shove our ice out. So if that doesn't make any sense to you, that is okay. Rest assured, it will all be, uh, it will all make sense to you when we're actually doing the build. So I guess thing number one is what I like to refer to as the bathtub. This is where we're actually going to make our ice. Um, if you don't know anything about ice in Minecraft, uh, it will only form if it is uh, from water that is exposed to the sky, and it will only form from a solid ice from a solid water block. So if it's moving, like this water none of this stuff can freeze. This block would be the only one that would. Um, actually, hey, bear with me for a minute. I'm going to turn off the sound effects here so that we don't have to listen to that. Actually, let's just turn it all off. How about that? Um, so, yeah, in this example, the only block that would freeze is the one that I stuck down right here, and that's only if it were exposed to the sky. Uh, when we're building this thing, this stuff will be down a lot lower, but I wanted to let you get a look inside so you could see what was going on. So our premise on our bathtub is we've got this part blocked off from the sky so that our water source blocks that are here will never freeze. And the reason that's important is we can place water source blocks all on this back wall and we'll get a nice little flowy thing here. But as soon as we place another one here, all these will turn into a solid, a solid uh, water source block. So when I throw this here, you can just kind of watch it cascade down and boom. Now, all these are solid water source blocks, but the only ones that can freeze are... The, I think in this example there's five of them, if I'm not mistaken, that are exposed to the sky, and that is right here. So eventually these five will all freeze into solid water block or solid ice blocks, but these guys will not. Uh, so what our what we're going to do is we are going to place pistons actually instead of the floor that I've got here. We will use just regular pistons underneath so that we'll every when the timer here goes off, we'll send our redstone signal to power those pistons which will take the ice blocks, if there are any right here, and it will shove them up. 
if they're wa solid water source blocks, it will just destroy them. But uh, when the pistons pull back down, there we go, we're starting to form. Uh, when the pistons pull back down, the water source blocks that are back here and around the side, which cannot freeze thanks to our roof here, uh, will do exactly what you just saw before and it will turn everything back into solid water source blocks that we can then freeze again. So what do we do once the, everything's pushed up here? Well, that sounds great, Quicksilver, except now this is blocking the ice, right? Well, what we're going to use for our rooftop blocks here is we're going to use another set of pistons over top of the water here. Um, and here it doesn't really, actually just right here, the ones that we're going to move. So what we'll do is our signal that is going to shove these up will also then, after a slight delay, will get carried up and it will get ca ca carried over and it will power the pistons that are back here facing this direction to push that ice out of the way. So we'll shove it over and that will then expose, and then when they retract we'll have those blocks exposed to the sky again. Um, then we'll, the last set is, uh, that I didn't actually build here but it doesn't really too much matter, is once we get them, the water, or the ice I guess, moved over to where we want it, we'll have another piston up here that will take the same signal, we'll travel, we'll carry it around and up here and it will start shoving them down. So that's why we have two floors here. Up here is where we're going to make our ice. We'll shove it up and over. Uh, if you did just want to build this one level, you could just keep shoving it over 12 blocks and you could build the, uh, I guess, then shove it down and build your wall stuff on the same level as it. But anyway, that's not what we're doing. So just to keep on target here, on track, uh, we'll shove the ice up, over, and then we'll shove it down below here. And once it gets down here, we'll have our uh, bud switch We'll build it in the floor, eh, probably right around here -ish somewhere. So when our ice hits it, then we'll power our piston wall. It'll be right behind it, and it'll shove the ice over. And then what we'll do is, uh, to make sure that our ice doesn't go too far, we'll take advantage of the fact that pistons cannot push, um, uh, boy, not bedrock. What's the term we're looking for? Obsidian. So what we'll do is, anywhere we want to make sure the ice pushes over, but not any further, we'll throw down a, uh, an obsidian block and that'll make sure that when the ice hits it, it stops and it doesn't keep pushing and break our machine or break any of our redstone or anything like that. So as you can see, our ice here, just in the time we've been talking, has almost completely frozen up. In my uh, Let's Play world, if you've been following that, um, I do have a little bit of a problem because I'm, I was counting on the fact that if we were above block level 90, it would all freeze. However, it does not all freeze. Only some of it does. So I've gone ahead. I've made a, uh, what do they call this? Is it just uh, an ice planes, I guess, is what uh, Minecraft makes this biome into. So basically, if you build this thing anywhere uh, that has snow everywhere in it, if it's an ice planes biome, ideal ice spikes would probably work. I think the taiga forests that... Um, have snow everywhere probably will still do the trick. I don't think that um, that uh, Minecraft or Mojang has changed that. I think if there's snow on the ground everywhere then it will probably work. However, I do know for a fact in ice biomes like this one, the ice plains, the ice mountains, or the ice spikes, this thing will work great. Uh, if you build it, if you want to do like I did and you want to build it above level 90, just bear in mind it may not all freeze. You may not get lucky at all and none of it will freeze. So you want to kind of build this part first and make sure that it's going to work before you build it and that was the uh, mistake that I made so anyway uh, learn from me on that one and uh, that is what you'll want to do to make sure it'll all work um, our bud switch over here just to kind of explain it to you really fast it's a really simple little build I forget where I learned this one uh, I think I give credit in it when the uh, in my let's play world when I was building this thing to begin with so if you're curious who did it check that out I apologize if you're the guy that built it and I'm not giving you credit here but I did originally so anyway uh, the way it will work is when our ice is like I said we're pushing it up over and then down when it gets pushed down far enough and it hits like let's say it was right here and then it gets pushed down one more time when it ta when it hits here what will happen is the uh, the bud will happen uh, which is bud stands for block update detector so when this block gets updated by another one hitting it it will cause this redstone block to get pushed out which will then turn this redstone dust off which will let this torch turn back on which will then shove that redstone block back over and it does it all so quick that the uh, redstone dust down here uh, or so that our, our torch in this doesn't actually create a loop because it's, it does it so quickly that uh, I don't know the game doesn't have a chance to pick up on what's going on but then the signal that will pull out of this block being over here very briefly before it gets shoved back is really really fast and if you don't throw it, one repeater in it it was all we can, if you don't throw at least one in there you won't pick up the signal at all but for what we're doing we can only throw one in it 
or else the signal that we get back here to our wall is going to be too long. So I'll go ahead and I'll show you this, how, this is how it works. When our ice gets pushed down, we get that happening. Oh, which is really cool because you don't have to listen to it. So as you can see, anytime that that block gets changed, we get that going on. Now if you notice, you won't see this redstone actually ever, if you can see it down there at the bottom, you'll never actually see that update. Well, I guess you do for just a brief second. I didn't notice it from over here, but I guess from above you can see that a little bit better. Yeah, I guess it's so quick when that redstone block goes in front of it, I don't see it. But because we have this in here, you can see it in that, that um, redstone lamp that I've got back there, which is why I threw that in there. So that's just long enough that when the signal gets tra uh, travels through this stuff, and that's just indicative of our repeater that we'll have in here, what we'll get is basically the same as a button press would be on that. Now I've got a lever on that, but if we throw a button on there, I think it'll be a long enough uh, signal. We'll, go, we'll use a wooden one. That'll definitely be long enough because it's a slower button. That happens, so it'll shove out, and then it'll retract back. So, and that's basically going to move our ice out so that we can make room for more ice to get pushed down. And ultimately, like I said, if we stack this thing over, like I said, I think I'm going to do it about seven times, then we'll have, uh, I guess, seven rows coming down that'll be five blocks deep. So we'll shove those out. So basically, we're going to be shoving 45 blocks, or 35 blocks. Man, I can't do math tonight, guys. Sorry. 35 blocks at a time will get shoved over. And because the pistons can shove up to 12 blocks deep, we could, in theory, just count 12 blocks over, put our obsidian wall up there. That is the only other thing is you do need a bit of obsidian to build this thing, but that if, you're, if you have the resources to do this, you probably don't have a problem getting obsidian. But if we have you know, 12 blocks over by 35, you, know, you do the math, we're looking at 370 blocks of ice, basically just a big, huge mass of ice when this thing is completely cooked out. Uh, the beauty of this is it is automatic. It will do it all while you're off running around your base doing other things, so you don't have to monitor it. Uh, as long as this thing is loaded, it should be freezing ice, and it should be pushing it up over and out every time that thing ticks off. So there you go. Those are the fundamentals of this thing. So let's uh, actually get down to business building this thing. I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this a little break here and go AFK so I can uh, make sure I've got my widths and everything right. But I will be right back with you in just a second so we can get cooking on this. Alright guys, this little floaty purple block right here is where we're going to start with, uh, I guess, the bathtub portion of this thing. Um, <clears throat> this block is, I believe, actually indicative of where we want to get our row of pistons. And we want to have the just normal pistons, nothing sticky, just pointing straight up. And on doing my count, we're actually going to do eight of these things, not seven. So I was a little wrong there. And we want to be, basically, uh, the, what this is, is it's four blocks high off of this second height and we're five blocks back from the front of this thing so that's where we're placing these and then just one block away from this outer wall uh... incidentally you know what i just uh, let me pause on that for a second i don't think i told you where these blocks are so if this is our floor like i said this is sixteen blocks high um, i believe is that right let me double check really fast i did make some notes so i wouldn't be talking stupidly yeah so our, t our total height here is sixteen blocks high um, this is actually I believe nine blocks off the ground, so that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, maybe it's eight blocks off the ground. Maybe I counted wrong. We'll see. <laughs> but anyway, okay, so that's where we are with this thing. So we're starting this thing four blocks off the floor, and if you're building this thing, you can just dig down. That was actually how I ended up doing it in my uh, Let's Play world, which might make it a little easier for you. But we want to do eight of these guys, three and four. So, oops, let me count those out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we want one more of those guys right there. So, okay, so that is our first row of the normal pistons. And then I'm going to place down just normal blocks behind it. You can use whatever you want to. Um, then we're going to need to wall this thing in. Okay, like this. And let me get them all up here. Now it is going to be a little different on this side actually. I think I want to do one more row like that because we're going to want to make sure that we have our extra block of non-freezable water over here. <coughs> and I'm going to get the corners out of here too just to make this thing a little prettier. So that is that. So we've just made a little bathtub, no different than we had over there. So I'll get rid of that for now. I have a feeling we're putting it back in because I'm going to do some vertical wiring later to move some signals around. So that is what's going to put our water, once we have it in here, it's going to move our ice up. So then let's go ahead and we'll put our next row of pistons. You don't have to use a piston back there. I just did that to get this thing in place. Um, this is what's going to protect 
our uh, ice or our water blocks from freezing right here like I mentioned and then we're just gonna go as far over as these guys are and I'm gonna actually leave that open right <coughs> for right now just so it's easy access and then we're gonna throw a solid water source block on all these I understand you don't necessarily need to do that you can probably make the game create some for you but I did because I'm in creative mode and I can so there we go and then I'm just gonna cover those two up so at this point these guys should all start to freeze and once they're all frozen then yep, wow it's starting quickly that uh, that should have our water our water and our pistons all set up so again it's just eight of these here eight down there and we're all set there and this block back here we're gonna use ultimately because we want to power these up so let's go ahead and I'm gonna build another row of blocks behind there because we're gonna run redstone on top of that so that we can power these guys up so now we now in theory once we get this powered up we can move our ice up and we can move our ice over so the only thing left that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to be able to move it down. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to build up two blocks here, and this is just temporary stuff. And then I'm going to place our pistons, another row of them, eight blocks, right here like that. So I will move up, over, and then this is where we'll push it down. So again, no different than we did before. We're going to have eight of these guys, just like that, lined up. Bum, 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 bum. And bum, I think that's eight, right? Let's count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep. So that is that, and then again, we've got to have another row of blocks, oops, either on top of that, but I'm going to do it behind there, so that we can power those guys up as well. Everything in this is really just kind of about finding creative ways to get your redstone to move around. And it's probably the only tough thing in this, and hopefully I'm going to be able to do that rather gracefully for you guys and not look stupid. So we will find out. Actually, you know what? I think, yeah, yeah, that's right. That should work for us. And yeah, okay, that looks good. So I guess at this point, we are ready to start with the redstone timer for this guy. So let me get my bearings about me here really quick, guys. I'm going to go ahead and throw this block back in. And I'm just going to get this set up right now so that we can get our uh, vertical wiring in place when it's time to do that. So that's what those blocks are for, so that we can bring our power up there then directly underneath these pistons we want to go ahead and we want to throw in a row just of blocks again eight of them just to match each piston and that's going to be so that we can move our uh our, so that we can control this bottom row of pistons so let's start with with uh, the wiring actually for those then we'll get our timer in place so that we can control whether they're up or down so i'm going to go ahead i'm just going to throw a Oops, you know what? I knew it, I knew it, I knew it. I did this before when I was building it. We actually want to bring that up to it so that it's right underneath it, not so that it's one block so it's one block away, not like I did. So sorry about that guys. So then we're gonna throw a redstone torch on there and you should hear them all fire off. And I think this is what I was talking about. I think my floor may be off by one, but I'll figure that out as I'm building it. So now, as you can see, we've pushed all of our ice blocks up, and we did indeed have all of them except for that one filled up with ice. Um, <coughs> so right now, though, we still have our water source blocks underneath the pistons and underneath that wall, uh, which I will peek at really fast. Yep, so we can make new ice as soon as those pistons go back down. So that is going to be step one there. So I guess uh, at this point, we will start our timer because everything else is kind of dependent on that. So let me take a quick look at what we need to do, and I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I am back in here now, and if I'm not mistaken, what we're going to do now... Uh, also, I did double-check, and this is actually at the right height. We're going to do some crazy buildy stuff, and I had the whole floor half-slabbed up in my world, so that's what made it feel like that was too high, but I think we're in good shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this back corner, opposite from uh, the redstone torches, just to kind of get your bearing. There's the... Uh, pistons that are pointing up so if we're facing if this is the front of the unit we're going to go to the back right corner and we're going to count in five blocks so it's one two three four five that's going to be our first that's going to be the first part of our little hopper timer here uh ethos hopper timer i think maybe it's seth blings i don't know uh so we're going to put down two hoppers facing into each other we're going to then throw down a comparator on either side and then we're going to throw down a solid block next to that comparator redstone dust in front of each solid block um, oops and then we gotta get some sticky pistons I hate when I forget those <laughs> so 
So we have a sticky piston here in front of that redstone dust and another one here in front of that guy. And then we're going to throw a redstone block right there. Then into each of the, or into one side of this, we're going to throw down two stacks. That's going to give us, um, you know, I wish I had done the math for you guys, but I don't remember. It's going to give us a pretty long timer that we're going to actually pull off of here. So then we're going to throw down a redstone dust here and a block here and throw some redstone dust on top of that. And when this thing goes back, that's what's going to send power into that. So that's what's going to give us one of our timers. On this block, we're going to throw down a redstone torch and then redstone here and here, a solid block here, and redstone on top of that, and then a repeater here set to four ticks. And that's going to be important. And then our output for that, this is our mono unstable circuit that we've just built. We're going to throw a torch on there, and that's going to be our output for that thing. So that is what's going to power our stuff. We're going to throw down another repeater here with no, uh, no delay on it. And you can see that thing flicker, and that's a beautiful thing. A block in front of that and another redstone torch on that and that is pretty much it for the trickiest part of the build so what we should have is there should be a this should be on at all times except when it gets a change in the uh, the state of this mono unstable circuit and then it's gonna flicker on and off for us really quick so then on our wall here I'm gonna throw down a row of these guys right here and I'm gonna do that again here Sorry for the weird cut, guys. I had a momentary lapse there. So I guess once we have this in place, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to throw down redstone dust all the way along here. And then I'm going to throw a row of redstone repeaters in place here all the way across. Oops, don't want any delay on this. And then to get our power up here, which is where I kind of had a little brief momentary um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, to get our power from this redstone torch up to here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna throw a block on top of that torch, and that's going to power everything up here. So at this point, our ice blocks are still in place up here because we're not using sticky pistons, but our pistons have moved back down, and as you can see, our water has all moved back into place so that it can refreeze, if only this ice was out of the way. So that'll be the next thing that we are going to take care of, is we want to get this signal up, right? So, um, I believe the way that I took care of this in my world, or the, at least the way we're going to take care of it in this world, is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get my... Uh, that ain't going to work at all. Um, oh, you know what? I actually have this in the wrong spot, guys. We want to bring our signal up over here anyway, because we got to actually move it around and get it on top of that. So, this is the easiest way to do that. So, I'm going to go ahead I'm going to pull our signal down from right, oh, we'll pull it down from here, why not? Eh, well, no, we won't, we'll pull it down from right here. And I'm going to take a redstone repeater and feed it into this block, and then I can throw a torch on here, and it won't feed into this stuff like you saw the first time. So we'll just do a little redstone wiring. That signal is off, which is good. Then, for the sake of timing, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to throw down a repeater here on four ticks, and I'm going to throw another one down right here on four ticks. And then we will bring our signal up here onto this, and we'll bring it around both sides. So as you can see now, because it just happened to tick off for us, that moves our ice over. So that is exactly what we want. Now this is exposed to the sky again. This ice has been moved over, so the next thing that will happen is the next time this stuff freezes up, it will push it up and over again, and then that will also move these blocks into position underneath those guys. Now just in case that doesn't happen, um, this is where I like to be overly cautious. Uh, if I can find obsidian, there we go. What I will do here is I'm going to take a row of obsidian, ah, hello, and I'm going to fall down on my face, and I'm going to throw it actually behind these guys. That way the ice can, it is not possible for that ice to get pushed any further out. So if I have a wall here in my cave or anything like that, I don't have to worry about it getting shoved out of the way 12 blocks away because something happened wrong and goofed all this stuff up. So that is that. <clears throat> so the only thing we have left to do really here is we need to feed some power into these guys. So again, and what's nice about that is we need the delay in here. The better, the longer that delay is, the better. So I'm going to take this signal, which is probably getting ready to peter out, and I'm going to go ahead and throw two more repeaters in here. And, well, you know what, let's throw one there and we'll throw another one here. That way we can make sure we have as much signal strength as we need. 
and we'll just carry it up here at that point all the way over to here. So now the next time that stuff fires off, we should be able to, and I'm going to go ahead and watch this, and make sure those things fire down. So even if we don't get uh, any more ice up there, those things are still going to fire off, which is uh, a very good thing. And we should be, here we go. And there you go, they're shoved down. So here's our first little bit of ice that we've produced uh, that is actually going to be usable eventually once it gets shoved down far enough. So that really, guys, is all you really need. If you wanted to at this point, if you wanted to make this just a simple little uh, machine, you could take the area that I'm going to look at right now, which is right here. Um, yeah, that's good. And we're going to, yeah, right in front of our piston, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to punch out these eight blocks so that our ice can travel down. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to make this just a really simple little ice farm, you could go ahead and throw some uh, obsidian in here. And as soon as this ice got shoved down, it would come to here, and you could just stop it right there, and you wouldn't have to worry about anything. When you wanted some ice in here, you'd have 40 blocks or so. Well, actually, one, two, three, four. You'd have 32 blocks available to you, eight wide by four high. You can come in here and just use uh, your shears or use uh, any, any silk touch item to pick your ice blocks out of there. But that's not fun. We're going to go bigger than that, right? Because that's the whole point of this thing. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to drop down here. I'm going to go ahead and knock these guys out of here for now. Um, we want to be, yeah, it's two blocks from the edge. Uh, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to throw some obsidian in here, again, just to be safe. Ultimately, I'm going to rip out this side, and we're going to build our bud switch in here, which I guess is actually going to go a little wider than, uh, than we wanted it to, uh, or than I intended it to down here. But <clears throat> we've also got to get our wall of pistons in place. So let's take a quick peek at that. Um, basically, the fun part, we just get to place a metric ton of these things. The nice thing is you don't have to have a slime farm or anything, because we're not doing anything. Whoops try that again. We're not doing anything that requires sticky pistons in this whole build except for the uh, the uh, redstone block timer I guess up there that we're using. But um, yeah, so I guess you know in this case we could actually be greedy and go even more if we wanted to. But oh, I guess the other thing we want to make sure of here before I get too antsy here, I want to make sure that this is only the uh, pistons up here will only push that ice down 12 blocks. So we want to make sure that our floor is at uh, 12 blocks high. I think it is, but I want to double check it just to make sure. So that I don't look like a total moron down here. So this is one block, that's two. This is three, four, five, six, seven where the floor is. Eight where this gap is, nine, 10, 11, 12. So yeah, see, it would look stupid. Okay, I built that thing. Like I said, I thought I had that floor off up here, and I did. So that's good though. This will give us more room to build the uh, the bud switch that we're going to have down here in the end. Ah, except I do have to build the floor up back here a little bit. So I'll tell you what. Let me go AFK for just a moment with you guys. And uh, oh, actually, let me go ahead and throw this top row of pistons in here. I think we can do it like this without having to punch a hole in there. We actually might. That was one of the things that I had to kind of contend with, as I, if I recall, was I had some redstone issues I had to deal with. So I wouldn't get any cross wiring on that. So that might be a little bit of a, you may have to, guys you may have to watch me kind of noodle through that a little bit, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and go off cam here really quick and just build this floor up so we can build uh, our redstone wiring back in here. So give me a sec, I'll be right back. Okay guys, here we are, actually behind the wall o pistons. Um, at this point, this is what we're going to build, is we're going to do this, and like I said, this is modular, so we're just going to stack this thing across, and it's going to be a little hairy, I guess, um, but you'll see. I hopefully it won't be too bad. So I guess the first thing we need to do is it's going to be, we're making like a big X kind of a pattern like this across the floor. I say an X pattern because to me from above, this looks kind of like an X to me, I don't know call me crazy. Um, <clears throat> then next to this we're going to do a block, solid block, solid block, and I'm just going to skip every other row just like this. And that I believe is that. Now in these little gaps that we have here we're going to throw down a repeater with no ticks going on it. And then over here we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to wire up all this And then from one common point, I'm going to call it right here, is where we're going to send our signal in that will make the whole wall shove out. So that is that part. Then, I guess, let me peek over here really quick, guys. I don't want to steer you wrong. So on the inside, then, 
next to this we're going to have our half slabs which actually I need to be over here anyway because I don't have any half slabs in my inventory so grab one of those really fast and on the bottom most row here um, and you only want to do this after you've already placed your stuff in there. I'm going to try and build this, I guess, each row at a time because otherwise it's really easy to block your redstone off. You can see, as I said, you know, we're closing in completely the repeater that's underneath that guy. So if I'm not mistaken, that is in the right place, right? Uh, no, it's not. Okay, so we're not going to completely block those off, but to the point where we can't really grab them. So it's going to be right there. That way we can stick redstone on top of that and let's go ahead and do that right now and the nice thing we're taking advantage of the fact that that redstone if you notice is actually connecting to this um, now here's the hard part we can't actually place we need to put a redstone or we need to put a block right here and it's kinda tricky to place that one unless you do like I did but over here so we can't place one on here because we have this redstone in the way um, I think can we place it? Nah, see, it won't even let us do that on that, uh, that top edge. Um, oh, yeah, I didn't mean to do that. So, alright, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and just going to build a little wall around behind here because I can. If you guys are doing this uh, in your world, you'll want to make sure you have, well, I guess you can pick out half slabs, never mind. But this is, I think, probably going to be the easiest way, oops, to place those, to get them in the right place and not use that guy. <laughs> so then there we are here. And I think, yeah, we're going to connect those up to up high. And let's get that in place. And we'll throw that there. That and that. That that. That and that. Now, at this point, I believe, I think we're going to place a solid block in this position. Is that right? Let me make sure. Our next level up. Yeah. And we're doing that for a couple reasons. Because if you notice this stuff connected to itself and by doing this we're cutting it so that our redstone is actually feeding into the block in front of it so that's how why we're uh, that's why we're doing it the way that we're doing it there is because we we gotta make sure you know, as you can see everywhere where it's important we're feeding power directly into one of those pistons so that is our the challenging goal that we have there and so then again we gotta bring that signal up to this block so that we can get the power there. So we're going to do the similar, a similar thing here as, that we, as we did over there. And again, that's why it's important to place, place your redstone kind of as you go here. Otherwise, it's really easy to cut yourself off and not be able to place it where you need it. See, so as you can tell, I'm just using these blocks in the back as a, oops, as a placeholder system so I can get these others in place or in the proper position. Why didn't that go where I want it to? Oh, because I'm putting it in the wrong spot. That's why. Duh. Okay, so that goes there, and this one's going to go here. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and place that there, that here, that here, this here. And I think that might be almost everything. I think we need to go up one more so that we can get our redstone feeding into these blocks. I hope. And that's what's going to happen by feeding it into these blocks. It's going to power these last couple of pistons that we've got. So let's go ahead. We're going to place it on this side here like that. And yeah, I think this is kind of... This one might have been the tricky one because I know, like I said, I know we're going to end up cross-wiring, I think at some point, unless maybe the design that I've got that I'm kind of copying this off of may have already kind of accounted for that. Let's hope because that will... Uh, make life easier and make this video shorter so <laughs> I'll throw that guy here 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 and here and I'm not sure we're feeding power into that block that might be a little bit of a problem because I think we want to feed it into that tell you what let's go ahead and we're gonna put a we're gonna run the lever on here you can see that ice kinda feeding down which is nice um, I'm gonna go ahead and test this by throwing a lever back here and hopefully I haven't done this wrong all that fires up, but yeah, see, so we still have these last couple of pistons. We've got to get our power not feeding like this. It's actually got to go into those blocks. Um, so i got to think about this because our issue is going to be the way that we resolved it in the other layers is by moving up another another level here, but we can't do that because we've got the, uh, the roof going on here already. I think when we start pulling this out, it's gonna, you know what, I think maybe that's why we lifted this up two levels, is so that we could do that. 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rip that out of there so that we can see what's going on there and make this a little easier for us. So, alrighty, um, do the same thing back here because I think we can. And again, that's just going to make it easier for us to get in and out of here. So, alright, give me just a second to kind of scratch my head on this one, guys, and I'll be right back to show you how we do that. Alrighty guys, as I like to often say, the simple solution eludes me a lot. The way that we're going to get this block powered is you know, pretty clear. We're going to do this, this, and this, and then I'm going to hope that, <coughs> pardon me, I'm going to hope that I didn't cross wire with anything up here, but I don't think so because I had all this up there, so I think I was right, and the design, yep, the design that we're copying with pulling this up already accounted for the fact that we need to do that. So then when I pull this out of there, we should be all closed. And, uh, and I should have a place to travel and then when this thing fires up which will be controlled by our bud switch then it all shoves out so that's good that's exactly what we want so then I can close that off and let's go ahead and I'll close the uh, floor in here because we don't need to have a big hole up here where we're running around so then our ice area where we're producing the ice uh, is obviously is working here no problem and the hardest part of the lower section where we're going to move our ice over and out is right here and now you guys see how that's done like I said that looks pretty complicated and it's but it's really not um, as long as you remember the top part of this and make sure that you've built this uh, exactly like I outlined so that we're doing that two blocks high then that's going to give you the room that you need so that uh, you have enough room to work up here and not cross wire any of your redstone with anything else up there see I think the first time I built this one I had this down lower my redstone that was moving up here was actually, I think it was cross-wiring and getting these uh, repeaters to fire off, which was then causing these to do bad things early, and that's just not good. So the only thing I guess that we have left is we want to build our bud switch, which as you can see from over here is pretty simple. So what we're going to need for it, and I'm just going to go ahead and cheat and grab it right off of here. Now I guess we already have that in place. Um, we're going to need a sticky piston, we're going to need some redstone dust, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that, don't need that. So it's pretty straightforward stuff there. So let's go ahead and get that thing built. What you want to do is you want to pick um, where you want to butt off of it. I'm going to do it off this right side since that's going to be the easiest way to build this. And right here, I'm going to throw in my uh, sticky piston. I'm going to get rid of that block, and I should have actually built this thing out a little bit wider. But for now, we're just going to kind of go with it, right? Um just because I don't think we really need all that but yeah okay we're gonna do that so then in this little hole that we've created in front of our sticky piston on the floor here we're gonna throw down a red dot, a dot of redstone dust and then on the other side of that block we're gonna throw a torch on the side of the block now next to that we are gonna throw down a normal piston and that will trap you in this hole if you don't have creative mode on so don't be too freaked out if that happens to you. It's not the end of the world. You just got to dig your way up and out and then replace the block. But uh, once you're there, throw that back in, and that should, if you've done it right, that should pull itself back. And then we're going to pull our signal off of here. So once our ice comes down here, and it, it should do this, and you can test it, and that should happen. So in that, anytime that block gets an update with ice going on and off of it, you're going to or ice going on it really, you should only get it uh, that one signal or that one time. So then all that's left to do for us is we want to take this signal, and the way that I did it before in my Let's Play world was I moved it underneath the floor. I think I carried this down another or something like that. I may have had uh, this all done. I know I had a bunch of half slabs on top of everything. You just can't put any half slabs in here. So the only thing that you have to, which you wouldn't want to do anyway because you get shoved off. The only thing that uh, you have to be aware of is you can have mobs spawn in this room. Um, I think in my Let's Play world I dug it down another level and I threw half slabs on top of everything. Pretty much I half slabbed everything out because torches are the enemy of ice. They're going to melt it all the time. It's really going to tick you off and it's really a pain in the ass. So you don't want to have to fight with that. <laughs> so I think I had half slabs on top of all this stuff that's next to this so you couldn't see any of it. And then I actually built a little opening back here so that I could get around to my redstone back in here if I needed to. So I think the only thing that's left for us here is we want to connect this up. And then I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to take this as the opportunity. Remember, we need to have a, rep a redstone repeater in here. 
set to no delay. If you have it on any delay whatsoever, you'll get a weird glitch with this thing where the act of this thing kicking out will cause this bud switch to constantly go in a big nasty loop. So I'm going to go ahead just to test it. We'll make the bud happen again. It should throw our uh, stone block out here. There you go. So if this thing was covered in stone blocks, it would have shoved them all out, or in the case of what we're going for, when ice is covering it all, it'll all get shoved out. Now, the only time it's going to actually do that is when this column has completely filled up the rows. So we have a pretty good chance, as you can see, of all these other ones having, uh, having ice filling them up. So you don't have to worry too much. You're going to have some gaps inside your solid area, but again, as long as... Uh, there's nothing there. It, uh, ultimately, it should fill itself completely in. So that is the good thing. Now, in my world, I had uh, I put a big in my Let's Play world, and you can check out the episodes where I built it. I had a whole bunch of flooring, floor space in here. That again, I think I have. I actually had it built down, and I half slabbed everything up so that I couldn't get any mobs spawning in here. But the only other thing, and the only reason I'm building this uh, over here right now, is because the only other thing that you absolutely need to have in here. Uh, is you want to have a wall of obsidian on this side so that your ice can't just continue going down here or can't continue to grow I guess as it gets shoved across once it reaches this wall it will stop going so I'm going to go ahead and we're just going to fill this sucker up right here and I believe this is eight blocks wide so it should account for every single space where we'll have our ice pushing across um, I think I might have done an extra row Nope, I didn't. Okay, good. So we're in good shape. So that should cover us. So ultimately, this whole area that I'm flying around in right here should become solid ice. Now again, you don't have to build this silly cage of uh, stuff that I've put around here. That was just for, for looks, so you guys get an idea of how big this build kind of is. Um, like I said, it doesn't take up a ton of room. Um, if you play around with it, and I'm not going to do it for you, but if you mess around, you can have this really if you wanted to you could have all the ice being built back here and having it shoved up high enough that it gets pushed up over this then it gets pushed over and then down um, you'd probably waste a little bit a lot more ice back here so it would take more time to fill up in this area but it would be a little more compact at that point if you wanted to try and do that and if anybody does do that if you want to send me a link to your video I'd love to see it it'd be kinda neat to check out how you guys uh, modify this thing um, the only other thing, and I will go ahead and do this really fast because I don't think it's going to take me too long to do, and we've probably already gotten this video super long, um, where whatever you have floored in, whoops, over here, uh, let's go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create, show you guys how to create a manual switch so that you can make all these pistons fire off. Uh, this block is the key for you to do that. It's the one that the uh, mono unstable circuit feeds into that makes all the, the powers really all your pistons. So if you put another repeater on this side and you run some uh, you know, redstone line over here, again, this is our wall that we've got going on. Um, if we do a, a little bit of vertical wiring, actually let's move it over. I'm going to build a little further out. I don't want to I don't want to interfere with our with our signal that's going in there. Um, Again, I think in mine, I've got it all convoluted and actually runs over on this side of the room. So it's really, you can, this thing can have as many repeaters in it as you want. Um, but yeah, ultimately, you just want to make sure that your signal is going to travel up here. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then we'll be able to control that power by throwing a button on, and I'll just do it in here. Yeah, again, there's any number of ways you can do it. I'm going to use a stone button just because it's going to be a quicker pulse. Wow, and you can't even see it. It's kind of cool. And it decided to snow for us. Isn't that lovely? So I'll throw that up here, that up here. And that's our signal going in there. We don't want that going on. So I'm going to run an, I'm going to invert our signal here. Because, um, yeah, like I said, we, we don't want that to be constantly on. We want this to be controlling it. So I'll do that, and we get a little quick pulse there. But there you have it. Now, if we go ahead and we hit that button, we should, after the ice that's here, we should, we, well, I don't think we're going to see it pulse down, but it should have fired everything off. Am I cracking up? I think I'm cracking up, guys. Tell you what, let's do it this way. There. Now we can run it straight off of that. That should send our signal into here, which will briefly turn that off and should do the same thing now as everything else. So when I hit that button, I don't think we're going to see ice move, but it will, uh, should fire off. Huh. 
What am I doing here? Um. Okay. Oh, I know one of the things I know what I'm doing anyway. Let me pop that out of there really fast because I don't need this down here at all. Because that's where we're doing our signal. I don't think maybe that's what's messing it up. Nope. Oh, you know what? I know what I'm doing. That's not going to turn that torch off. Sheesh. What am I thinking? Alright, so we're going to do that. And then we're going to do our vertical wiring up off the back of that. Sorry about that, guys. I hope that's not too confusing for you. We'll do that guy, and then we'll throw a block on here. And then I'll pop that guy out. Put another torch here. And then similar to that, we're, uh, we're going to do the same kind of a thing there. We'll do that, and then we'll put our torch off of that so we can inverse. That'll give us the off signal that we have, or that we want. And now when I hit this button, there we go. You can hear it. And it actually shoved that down. So there we have it. So that is the ice farm, guys, completed. Um, I hope the tutorial was clear enough for you. If not, or if you have any questions about how I built any of this stuff, um, please feel free to leave me a comment, send me a YouTube email or whatever. I will try and do my best to help explain anything that's uh, fuzzy for you. Um, again, the only thing that uh, I would recommend to you is half slab everything up so you can't get any mobs spawning on here and don't just don't put it in front of here because when these pistons shove out they'll destroy your floor um, but yeah you can hide everything make it all prettied up do whatever you want to it um, this area up in here you're probably safe putting torches along the walls of this thing but you don't want to get them close to your ice I think and don't quiz me on it but I think if you have a torch within three blocks of ice it will melt it into water and that defeats the whole purpose of this thing so Anyway, there you have it. That is the ice farm tutorial that uh, that I promised. If you guys like what you saw, please definitely give me a thumbs up on this thing. Uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please subscribe. I do a pretty constant Let's Play. I think I put out two videos a week that I try and do on it. Um, but yeah, if you liked it, thumb me up, and I will catch you guys next time.